Welcome, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. How exciting is that? We are in a whole brand new year. So I'm excited to see each one of you. Um, we have a full agenda, but I think that um, the way Angela has uh, laid things out, we will be able to get things going. So um, before we introduce our new commissioners, let's do a quick roll call. And if Aaron would kindly um, go ahead and let us know who's there in our notes, um, that would be fantastic. Um, from what I see, we have Holly, we have Susan, we have Tr Trisha. Tr you know what? I'm going to slaughter people's names. So when I mess up your name, get online or get on and tell us what your name, how you want it to pronounce. It's pronounced Teresa. Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. You're and welcome. we have Cindy and we have Andrea. We have Randy. We have Jennifer. We have Danielle. We have Peter. We have Aline. We have Pamela. We have Marsha, the Honorable Marsha Martin, City Council. We have Nicole. We have Kim. And we have Pamela. Correct? Yes. Excellent. Okay, from what I understand, we do not have any public invited to be heard. Is that correct? That is correct. No public invited to be heard. Okay, so we're going to move right on to, um, before we move into our welcomes, we would like to go to additions, corrections of our December 17th, 2020 minutes. We need a motion to approve or a motion to correct. Cindy, have you been through it? Yes, I have, and Aaron's doing a great job. I haven't seen anything. Oh, wow. Okay, if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. All right, so then you need to move a mo make a motion, Peter. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as submitted. Okay, then we need a second. Second. All in favor? Oh, I can't vote. All opposed? <laughs> Any objections? Excellent. We will move on to our next item. Cindy, um, I think you have a reputation. <laughs> So tonight we are really, really grateful. We have many, well, not many, but several new commissioners. And um, we talked today about how we would like to introduce everybody, but I think what we'll do, and I don't wanna take a lot of time with a big icebreaker, but what I would like all of us to do to get to know one another is to say who you are, why you joined the commission, and your favorite piece of art. It does not necessarily have to be an AAIP piece of art. So I'm going to start with Pamela. Oh, okay. Um, I've been on the commission about six months, seven months, since July. And um, I joined because I was really excited. Pardon me. I was really excited about um, doing art in the city. And I've been really impressed by the art that had been placed there. So that's why I'm here. And I think my favorite piece of art is one of the new pieces, the, the blue piece. And I can't remember the name of it. That's in the walkway downtown. The bear? The, the big, blue, yeah, I really like the bear. Ursa Major. Ursa Major. Thank you. Awesome, thanks for sharing. We're really glad to have you here. Uh, so I'm gonna just move up the scale. Uh, let's go over to Holly. That wasn't me because I hadn't even unmuted yet. I'm not sure who that was. Anyway, my name is Holly Bradish Lane and I've been with the commission for, well, probably a little, maybe a year and a half now. It seems like just yesterday, but i um, been with the commission a year and a half. And I joined because I wanted to play a part in how Longmont moves its fine art collection forward. So that's really why I joined. And my favorite piece of art pretty much of all time is Henry Moore's The Clam Digger. 
I don't know if anybody knows Henry Moore. He's a, He's a sculptor. sculptor. And quite honestly, any sculpture to me is magnificent. So that's one of my favorites. And welcome to you new guys. Great. Wonderful. Aaron, go ahead, my friend. Sorry, I had to move the screen over to unmute. Hi, my name is Erin Helzer. I joined the commission um, just in 2020, in August of 2020, actually. And I joined the commission because I wanted to um, have a say in art in my community. I am a big fan of public art and I think Longmont does a really great job. And I think this is a really awesome commission to be a part of. My favorite art, of all time, um, I'm going to follow in Holly's footsteps with sculpture is Wing to Victory. Um, uh, it's in the Louvre, um, but I, I, the full name of it is the Winged Victory of Samothrace or something like that. But anyways, Wing to Victory, which is a sculpture, is my favorite. So thanks. And well, oh, thank you, Aaron. No, thanks, Kim. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, let's go on, Susan. You're muted, Susan. Got it. Uh, sorry. Uh, my name is Susan Horowitz, and I've been on the commission a little under a year um, or at a year. And um, I wanted to be on this commission to be involved in art in our city and see how all that evolved and what was behind it and to um, bring a little something of myself um, in education to it. And my favorite piece of art, I have to move here because this just came yesterday or two days ago. I don't know if we can see it there. It is a sculpture of a bird and my dad um, who passed away over 30 years ago um, did that and I've been trying to get my most of my family lives in Atlanta and I've been trying to get it to my house for like 30 years and finally there was an occasion that um, somebody could caravan it to me so it was, you know, I have to think of it like a uh, phoenix rising because of things changing in our lives and things being hopeful. And um, yeah, so at the moment, that's my favorite piece of art. That's great. Wonderful. And, and he lived in Georgia and he actually, that piece of marble came from, um, came from um, Fort Collins one time when he was here visiting me and we went up there to buy some marble. That's fantastic. So, that's cool. Thank you, Susan. Um, Teresa, we're so glad to have you here. So you have one additional question because you are a new friend. Um, we would like to hear why you decided to join the commission on top of the other questions. Um, why I wanted to join the commission is because it looked like fun um, and I love art. So that was the just of that. Um, my favorite art piece is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's a sculpture by Alexander Calder. I don't think it has a name. I think it has a number, but I have no idea. <laughs> and I guess that's it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Teresa. Um, Angela, you don't get out of it. <laughs> Angela. Well, hi, I'm Angela Burrell, and I have been a part of the Longmont Art and Public Places program now since uh, I joined very end of August 2019. So um, that's exciting. I don't have a favorite piece of artwork. It just depends on what day it is and how I'm feeling. And so lately, I've just been really into the Bauhaus and Werner Werkstatt. Some of you might know. So textile patterns from from the Bauhaus is kind of my jam right now so it's my avatar it's everything I'll start sending you patterns but it's really loud and lovely so um yeah thanks Angela uh Miss Cindy Tiger 
tell us about you and your art. Hi, everyone. I've been on the committee feels like forever and I'm loving every minute of it. Um, and I joined because I like art and I was retiring and I wanted to give back to the city. And I like kind of all art, everything that strikes my fancy I like. I don't have a very, very favorite one though. I do have to say that uh, William Blake's The Ancient of Days is one of my favorites. When I first saw it, I was sitting on the floor in the library at Norlin at CU. And I turned the page and I saw this picture and I very nearly ripped it out of the book. I liked it so much. And then I was like, wait, wait, you're in a library. It's a book. So, but yeah, it's, I'm very fond of that. Cindy, are those palm trees outside your window there? Maybe, <laughs> if you want. I was thinking actually about going to San Francisco today. Oh, okay. <laughs> that would be nice too. I keep trying to mute myself so we have good technology. Oh, Ms. Andrea Mathwich, I, I think your history on AAIP also deserves some recognition. So tell us about you. Hi, um, I don't know how long I've been on. <laughs> I'm losing my memory. <laughs> it's been 20 years that I've been on uh, the board and I love it. I joined because I just, have always wanted to beautify Longmont. Longmont is so beautiful anyway because of the, the mountains to the west that it just inspires you to want to continue to beautify it. And certainly being on AIPP is a great way to do that. Um, I am art wise, I, it's, I, have, I love architecture. Um, and uh, the one that just really struck me the most is Gaudi's church in Barcelona. The one that looks like, it looks like a giant anthill and yet it's a church. And I just, I was like, just flabbergasted that it was created that way. So I guess that's the one. And then of course, I love the listening stone in Longmont, which I don't think is working right now yet, but um, it's because it's interacting interactive and it's very calming and soothing. So that's why I like that one. And hi, Teresa. Teresa has been on the board before. She didn't say that before, but she was on the board before. So welcome back. <laughs> Yay, Teresa, I did not know that, sorry. I'm, I've been here six years, this is my last term. So I apologize for that, welcome. I'm so glad to meet you. Um, Let's move on. Ms. Randy Long. Hi, I am wearing a hat because it's chilly in my office. Um, I've been on the commission five and a half years, maybe as long as Amy, pretty much. I think um, you were one semester after me. Okay. I call it semester. I love living in Longmont. Love it, love it, love it. Love this city. And I just want to make it more beautiful than it already is. Um, I don't have a favorite piece of art. I like a lot of art. I like fused glass. I like Rodin's sculptures. I like, I don't know, lots of different things. So no, no true favorite that I can think of. Thank you, Randy. I keep unmuting and going back. Hi, Jennifer. We're really happy to have you here. Um, I'm going to make, I don't want to make a faux pas, but you haven't been on the commission before, have you? No, <laughs> no. All right, um, great. Tell us about you, your favorite piece of artwork, and why you joined the commission. Uh, well, I'm Jennifer Miller, and I just really, my, what, my biggest motivation, I think, was I just wanted to be part of the life of the community. I love being part of the, you know, going to different stuff in town. I love going to the parades. I love going to all the different things that there are. And I've lived in Longmont, not quite five years. And um, so I just looked down the list of commissions and decided that this was one that looked like the most fun and would fit with my skills and my background and so forth. So I, um, 
it's true, it's very hard to choose. But the first thing that came to my mind when you posed this question is, uh, I love the freeze that's outside the library. And I often take visitors to see it. I think it's so charming and it's such an interesting form of a, you know, the freestanding freeze. You don't see that kind of thing too often. But I also love, I love O'Keefe and I love this uh, black iris. This one is called, yes, this is a black iris. There's several in this black to gray to cream with pink that I love of hers. I love O'Keefe. And um, so. Thanks, Jennifer. I'm a big O'Keefe fan myself. Um, Danielle, great to see you. Same thing. Why are you here and your favorite pieces of art? Um, I'm here so that I can be part of the community. I figured this was the perfect year to be a little bit more involved. So, and I saw this um, opportunity of approach me and I decided it was uh, just to go for it. So I'm super excited to learn from everybody. And I don't have a super diverse background in art, but I figured this is the perfect place to learn. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, um, my husband and I are pretty avid screen print collectors. So I have a lot of screen prints in my house, but aside from that, I love all art, I anything and everything. So just love to get out and about. Um, yeah, if I would say that lately in Longmont, I'm really attracted to the a, a lady and a damsel. I think that's super cool. I'm all about the recycled art. So yeah. that's super cool. I love her too. Isn't she amazing? Super fun. Um, I'll just say headlights and everybody else will know what I'm talking about. Right, Andy? It's one of my favorites too. Great. Uh, Danielle, we're really excited to have you here. Peter. Yes, my name is um, Peter Alexander. I've been on the commission for two and a half years now. Um, and um, I hope to have another term. Uh, we'll see. Um, and um, I joined the commission because I was so impressed when I moved to Longmont. And I love being in Longmont. I was so impressed at the public art collections. And I thought, well, I have some, some experience and some um, skills that might be useful for the, for the Art and Public Places Commission. And I applied and got on. And as for favorite works of art, um, as someone earlier said, you know, it may change from day to day. But right now, I was, when you asked that question, the first thing that popped in my head was George Surratt's Sunday in the Morning and on the uh, Ile de Grand Jean, which um, I have seen in the, in the uh, Chicago Art Institute. It's, it's, uh, it's enormous and very powerful when you see it. And another reason is probably the fact that I had the great uh, privilege and honor a number of years ago of conducting a production of Sending in the Park with George by Stephen Sondheim at the University of Iowa. So that work is, is particularly um, in my heart, I think. That's great. Thank you very much, Peter. It's great to have you here. Peter's wonderful. You all will enjoy him. And I already hit Pamela. Uh, Jennifer, I think I hit you, but I'm losing people's cameras. So, Jennifer, I hit you, right? Yes, okay. Eileen? Oh, Marsha, you're Marsha. Oh, no, there's Eileen. Hi, Eileen. Sorry, I'm, the, the problem is, is that I'm going by your squares, as you know. Um, Marsha, your turn. Hi, everybody. Um, this is my, uh, I'm going into my second year on the commission and I may or may not have any more years on the commission since I'm up for re-election in November. Um, Vote for Marsha. Pardon me? Marsha, Marsha, <laughs> Marsha. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Um, I hope you remember that. Um, I, uh, um, you know, we all serve on committees. Um, I chose Art in Public Places because I thought it's a good thing to be able to report on uh, what we need to enhance our city and, you know, bend city policy toward that a little bit if it's possible. Um, and my favorite piece of art is one that I have owned most of my life. It is a little um, uh, Ray Harm watercolor. He is a a, a nature artist, and it's a sea otter floating on its back. So it's not a high art, but I enjoy it every day. 
That's really important. So Arlene, I know you would like to get out of this, but you're here with us, so you don't get out of it. That's right. I think I can manage. Uh, and I finished my dinner. So that's <laughs> Um, my name is Eileen. I am the registrar at the Longmont Museum and help uh, Angela out with um, administrative things. I do a lot of registration, um, keeping track of the collection, where everything is, uh, when we installed it, that sort of thing. Um, my favorite, I, I have the privilege of working with art um, almost daily. And today I spent a lot of time with a few uh, Degas uh, pastels um, and so come to, to the new show at the museum that's opening next week um, and you'll get to hang out with them too they're in pretty good shape I got to condition report them today that's awesome so We're she's really good that she got to touch a Degas today yeah I'm bragging just a little bit <laughs> all right I'll be in next week okay great we're so glad you're here. You've been such a wonderful addition, so we thank you. Um, Nicole, I know you're just our, you say you're just this, but you are in our windows and we wanna hear from you. Hi everyone, so <clears throat> my name's Nicole and I work um, <clears throat> at the city as an executive assistant. And um, when COVID happened, we all got extra duties. So my duty is running the Zoom for the community service boards, which I love because um, clearly I have an issue talking a lot. So thank God I mute myself um, or I'd take up your whole meeting. Um, so I've just really enjoyed be, um, being on all the, you know, part of all the boards because I listen in the background. And so I've just learned so much. I don't live in Longmont. Um, so I've learned a lot about just stuff in Longmont and all the art stuff. And um, this is going to really be bad, but I don't really have a favorite art piece because i um, I'm just not very knowledgeable <laughs> about art. So I'm so sorry. No, you don't. You don't. Don't you apologize. Never uh, beat yourself down. This will probably make you want to go look at things. Mm -hmm. I bet mm -hmm. you. I mean, that, that's what we're here about. We're trying to let people open up their minds and learn more. We're really glad to have you here. So thank you. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Kim, you are the last on my screen. Okie doke. Well, so I am Kim Manage. I am actually not on the commission. I am the director of the Longmont Museum. Um, and uh, the Longmont Museum is the um, entity that um, administers the Art and Public Places program. So I show up every now and then. Um, my favorite piece of art, I'm totally with Angela and Peter. Like I don't really have a favorite work of art and with a master's degree in art history, I think it's like virtually impossible for me to identify one. Um, and I've totally been inspired by all of your answers. It makes me think about all the wonderful pieces of artwork in the world. Um, but if I were Forced to answer at this moment in time, I think I would say um, James Terrell, a James Terrell piece. Um, he's a light artist, if you aren't familiar with him. And he's been working on a piece for years and years and years and years um, that is supposed to come to fruition soon um, that is called the Roden Crater. And so it, it, he actually purchased a piece of land in New Mexico that is a crater that he is turning into a sculpture and I can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. That's awesome. All right. I think I hit everybody. Did I hit everybody? If I didn't speak now, because I've tried, I really tried. Okay. My, my name's Amy Mann. Um, I am an instructor faculty member at Front Range Community College. I am in my five and a half years on the commission. Um, I love it. I really miss the personal interaction that we've had. Um, so Zoom has been a real struggle for me, um, as has 2021. Um, I have a new favorite artist. Um, I'm not gonna lie, my favorite art pieces in Longmont are those silly shock boxes that just make me smile every time I'm there. So if I'm in Longmont, but my very, very favorite one right now is um, an artist by, Ka um, it's Kathy, but it's a German name and it's Kolwitz. And I would encourage you to look her up. Um, Kathy is a, she's, her favorite work of mine is a piece that came out in 1903 and it's um she lost a child and I lost a child in 2010 and it's just beautiful beautiful um basically pencil and art so 
she's my favorite right now. Next week, as everybody knows, will be someone different. <clears throat> so thank you so much, everyone. I'm really grateful to have you here. Um, we've approved our minutes. We've done our welcomes. Um, I just want to also recognize um, the mentors that our new folks have. So um, I want to thank Cindy and Teresa. Uh, Cindy Tiger is Teresa's mentor, and they've been working together. At least they've met once. And I'll allow you all to comment on this in a minute. And then Randy and Danielle have met once, at least. And Jennifer and Jennifer, uh, Jennifer and Susan have met once. So mentorship is something that we thought this program really, really needed. And so we're grateful to have everyone participating in that. And I'll let anybody who wants to comment on that um, make a comment. But thank you so much to our mentors and to our new members. No one? Are you having fun yet? Good. That's all that, well, that's not all that matters. All right, let's get busy, folks. So we are on to item number seven. Um, I have a different version of the agenda. So um, Angela promised to help fix me up when I got um, mixed up. But we are talking now about public art project updates. And we have the Werdemann Park Sisters um, update. So, Angela. So, at this moment in time, I met with um, Parks Department last fall, and we are scheduled to have our quarterly update soon. Um, and then, of course, the Sister Cities uh, Guzman team, which is three folks from, from their uh, larger body, are meeting with the task force hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So that's Susan and Cindy. So um, jury's out on when that date will be, but it absolutely will be before our next meeting. Um, where Steve is in the Wortman Park project as of last fall was they are going to consultations. So they should be going to bid. And what that means for us is we actually will have officially a timeline of when construction will be underway basically when our uh, concrete will be poured and then that will determine uh, the timeline for the art project. So uh, I anticipate that we'll, we're going to get cranking and that call for entry should be out this, this first quarter. So um, more to come on that. Thanks, Angela. She's just moving quick. All right. So um, item number B under public art project updates. We've got the good old, I know you all have heard this one, RSVP, but guess what? We're gonna talk about the Boston Bridge. Angela. So the Boston Bridge project, the last that we had spoken, um, of course I had spoken with the senior engineer and you know it needed to go back to the tippy tippy top and say, hey, we need a, a drawing for you to share with us so we can start developing what that idea is gonna look like. And that's where we are. So um, I anticipate seeing something here, uh, but yep, it, it's coming along. And same kind of thing on the timeline for that. They're at a 60% design, uh, which means that we're in prime time for launching something. It's a, it's a, a, a good time uh, to do it. So, yep. Great, thanks Angela. So our next item is a little bit bigger and a little bit more complicated. And so Angela and I agreed to like kibitz back and forth on this one. We are now talking about Art on the Move 2021. And those of us who have been on the commission, this is probably one of our favorite things of the year. And it's been a little more complicated, right, with COVID. So um, we have some opportunities. Um, we did have some opportunities to partner with LDDA, and I'll let Angela explain what happened with that. They were they were they're totally on board with us in the future, but that's something that um, we're going to have to look to in the future. Um, we have some opportunities here. Um, we can look to with our art on the move, calling for artists in a two D fashion and a 3D fashion. So I'm gonna let Angela explain a little bit about that. And then what I'd like to do, or Angela can do too, is um, we need to probably look at some voting opportunities with some money with both the 2D and 3D pieces, right, Angela? 
So um, at last year, we, because of a prompt from Judge Frick at the Safety and Justice Building, he was looking to uh, update their space somehow, uh, but there wasn't a capital project in, in that space. And so task force got together, went and looked at the space and spoke with Judge Frick. And of course, you know, in, the, in those beginning moments, it's, I would like to see this and I'd like to see this. And so what Art, on the, or Art in Public Places was able to do at the time uh, in, and in the short term was to install a railing along the wall in the waiting room, which we permitted us to put up uh, two-dimensional works, but also not bang holes into the wall so we can move things in and out. So we have a set amount of linear feet wall space uh, to hang some works in the short time, short term. So we incorporated that into our On The Move last year, and we bundled it, if you'll recall, and folks who were voting all together. And that became complicated because we were judging, if you will, from the call for entry, three-dimensional work sculpture and also two-dimensional work. So the question at hand, because we are at that time where we need to launch the call for entry for the whole program, the program in whole, is do we separate those two calls into two separate items, art on the move three-dimensional, art on the move two-dimensional, and continue to treat the uh, safety and justice building space every single year. So it would have rotating art every year. Um, so that's the first question. The second question for discussion is if we do that, when it, we're looking at two-dimensional artists, paintings, photograph, photography, et cetera, do we look to uh, loaning from one artist who will treat the entire length of the wall? And then what, was the, what would the stipend be to treat that space? How we did it in 2020 was one artist whose work was cohesive, who is cohesive. And we, a lot for the three paintings on loan, uh, we gave them $1,000, which is the same amount of money that the three-dimensional artists get for loaning uh, one sculpture. So those are kind of the questions at hand. Uh, just a reminder, our uh, limit is $7,500 for the entire program. And currently in the 2020 to 2021 loan cycle, we have six sculptures on display and three paintings. So a total of nine works uh, and we spent this, we spent seven thousand dollars. So every artist received a thousand dollars for for their loan. So um, I think just a discussion underway of how we would like to to proceed. Certainly, uh, keeping in mind the complication and uh, the going through the uh, submissions and making that as easy as possible is is the big goal. So. So I had to have Angela explain this in Amy terms, which can be quite um, a little simpler. So we have to figure out 2D, 3D, and how much money, right? So for those of you who need Amy terms, that's what we're looking at. Um, and maybe it's your terms too. Maybe I, I don't want to say simple because I admit that I am simple. So I'd love to open this up for discussion and questions. Um, and Angela, okay, Randy, hit it. I would like personally to increase that fund if possible. I don't know how we how to do that <clears throat> because I don't think uh, seven or eight pieces is enough. Angela. And yes, so in the grand scheme of things, especially in executive session, we have talked about the necessity of uh, supporting local artists in that way. And uh, that was the goal in having uh, the creative district and LDDA assist us. The problem is that to do that is uh, a change of the charter, uh, which means a change of the guidelines, which is an act of city council. So it is absolutely uh, not something that is easily done. Uh, and I think through our strategic plan process that will change in the short term for this year, um, that that's a very large task. 
Was the reason, so I remember in the past we've had up to maybe 12 um, pieces. Is the reason that it shrunk because we increased the price we're paying per artist? We did. So, um, and this was before my time, but this kind of art on loan um, program, if you will, is very common, especially in municipal public art programs in our state. And the amount of stipend that we are giving to artists is fair with the other programs and also gives us um, the edge of, you know, people want to come to Longmont. Yeah. So um, I think that going re backwards might not um, behoove. No, I'm not, I'm not right. saying we should pay them less. I just. Yes. But that you is know. exactly the case. I think even at one point it might have been five hundred or seven hundred fifty dollars or something like that. So yes, that's that's where we are. I think you're right. I think you're exactly right, Angela. I think that we went up. Cindy and I. I'm sorry. Oh, so go ahead, Cindy. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> because it's in the charter that we we get a percentage, not less than $7,500, right? Of whatever the, okay. So can we, as a commission, put in more money? I mean, we take the $7,500 that we're allowed by, by the charter, but can, then we, can we then vote for like another 5,000? Just, you know, just to pay people? It's I'd have to ask Angela that, sorry. So where, where it gets tricky is the way that our funding works. Um, so right as it sits now, the, and again, the, uh, I can't remember when Art on the Move came into play, but we're talking 10 plus years, right? So this is, this is, uh, it is, it's a little dated, certainly that way. Um, also with the way the pay scale, but um, it's, it's that the, the funds that come from art in public places are derived from a 1% of construction funds from capital projects with the city. And that as the charter is written now is designed to acquire assets for the city. And uh, the number of years ago when temporary art programs were coming to play kind of in a placemaking, that's really what it's called in contemporary kind of a status is that these loan programs were just kind of coming up. And so the commission at that time said, we'll support a program like that because we understand it supports local artists and either this percentage of your annual fund or $7,500, whichever is, whichever uh, up to a max of $7,500 is how much can be used for temporary artworks, AKA not an asset, right? And those are different line items in the budget. Um, so we, so without an act of city council and changing the charter, we are limited in the way that we support a temporary art, something that's not owned by us. And, and that amount of time is, is, can be variable, right? Um, for example, a shock art box, which we are commissioning in some amount of time might become defunct or might explode. They don't explode really, but you know what I'm saying? Um, to decommission it but we have a policy for how that happens um but a temporary art isn't the same as that does that make sense i think so um andrea you had a question or a comment so i'm taking it i'm hearing from you angela that it's it, it's impossible to change uh the policies this year because we have to go to city council to do it is that what i'm hearing Nothing is ever impossible. And I think that if we wanted to just strategically target that one little thing in our charter and make the change, we could. That being said, uh, because we haven't addressed the charter nor the guidelines nor, and we're in a strategic planning year because vision 2020 has expired uh, and we've already started the strategic planning process, uh, we could address the charter as a whole and then go to council with changes as a whole rather than one little specific point. Makes sense. Or not, or we could address one little specific point. Uh, to be honest, I, I 
I think that this council has a vision of culture in, in uh, Longmont and I think addressing the larger picture, um, but nothing's impossible. So Andrea has some more feedback. Well, uh, I, you know, I, I encourage us to go to city council ASAP. However, if we are doing some visionary talks in the near future, I'm, you know, I'm willing to wait on that, but what is that time frame for our vision uh, meetings? I don't know. So that's up to Angela there. Well, Holly and Amy are on the task force and we're meeting weekly. Um, yeah, we'll get to that one really quick, Andrea. It's pretty exciting. So, um, I don't know, maybe, um, Marsha, do you have uh, maybe some insight into um, how, because I, I don't really know the city council well enough to know about, I mean, a charter change is a pretty big deal, but about a uh, preferred strategy of that, whether coming, if there are multiple changes versus one change and time in between, what would be best process? So, so are, we're not talking the city charter, right? Which is a very big deal. You're talking about the art and public places charter. Um, well, it's a, it's a chapter of the city charter 14. Is it? Yeah. Okay. If it is a chapter of the city charter, then a charter amendment requires a public vote. So um, what you would have to, there are two ways you could do it. One is you could do it by petition, although you guys are so busy, I, I think it would be really hard to do that. Um, the other thing is that you can petition the council to put the charter amendment that you would like uh, on the November ballot. And, um, you know, you need to come up with a, a small justification for why you would want to do this and, uh, you know, how it would be paid for um, and so on. And then it would be a public vote to make that change. Uh, if you please send me a note, I want to confirm that because that's just the top of my head, you know, we just did a city charter amendment for the arts, um, sort of for the arts, uh, and it passed. So, you know, we've got a little bit of a track record going, but um, actually surprised that, that this is not controlled at all by the city budget, but directly by the charter, which is, you know, why I need to get some advice from Jim Golden about it. Yeah, I better do my double, triple due diligence and double, triple check as well. So, um, yeah. Um, if, if it is a matter of city funding, then, um, it, you know, then, then as you put together your strategic plan, it would be the much simpler process of making a request during budget planning season in June or July um, and try to get that rolled into the, the fall budget. So yeah, if, if, um, if, if you will send me a note, we can double team it a little bit. I do think that this is Kim. I do think that um, given the kind of uh, uh, the things that are required in order to change the ordinance for art and public places, I, I would recommend that we go through the strategic planning process in order to collect all the possible changes that we would want to see it's not going to be an easy process. So it doesn't make sense to me to do one tiny thing at a time. I think that it would make more sense to do a holistic approach to it. I would agree, but that's, I don't have any say. I, I would love to hear more feedback from anybody on the commission. I agree completely with what Kim said. Me too. 
Me too. So we will get into strategic planning here in a minute. And I think that will be helpful to kind of see where we're at. Um, the, the issue still lies. Do we want to have a call to artists um, with a call to artists? Angela, am I right in saying this? Um, a call to artists, 2D versus 3D. We kind of, woo, we went a little bit over the thing, but yes. What we're looking at is doing a, a, a call to artists, 2D art versus 3D art, and then looking at funding. And I, I, I respect Randy in saying that we want more money, but what do you all think about having two different calls? I think we should have two different calls. That Who was that? Aaron. Oh, hi, Aaron. You're up at my corner now. Um, I, I, I would. So we would need a motion on the floor. Um, if Angela will correct me if I'm wrong, that we would need a motion to have uh, two different calls, um, at least initially. And then we need to figure out how much money is going to go to each different area. Okay. All right. I'm like looking to Angela. I'm like still looking at her face, but yes. So um, the motion on the floor would be that we need two different calls and I would need somebody to move that, please. I move that we have two different calls, one for um, two-dimensional, one for three-dimensional art um, on the move. Great, that's a start. So the motion is on the floor. We would need a second. Second. Before before we approve it, do we want to discuss how many pieces will be in the 2D versus 3D money and all that? Or do we want to approve the motion and then discuss? Well, I think that's a great question, Randy, because what we have right now is um, my understanding, and Angela will correct me if I'm wrong, we have $7,500 total to go ahead and do this. So if we have, let's just be honest, the movement and the, the procurement and everything that is involved in a sculpture is much more time consumption or it's, it's harder than it is to have a piece of art. And Angela will explain to you about having, um, we've talked about having a procurement, an area where we have some art pieces that are 2D that would be set for that. But that's, uh, we, I think we need two different motions. Is that right, Angela? Am I on the right? Yes, so presently we just have one single call for entry for artist artwork to be loaned. Um, I, what we're looking to do here is separate it into two-dimensional and three-dimensional in the first motion. And then we can talk about the funding from the 7,500 base uh, in the second motion. Okay. okay. So what I'm asking now is if we have a motion on the floor that says we have two different separate um, calls for artists or call for artists in 2D and 3D. So we would need that motion to pass and then we can talk about money. Call the question. Yes, sir. Peter. Call the question. Oh, call the question. I thought you said you had a question. Oh. Excellent. So let's go ahead and, and bring the motion to the floor. All opposed to having, or all in favor of having two separate calls for artists, one via 2D, one via 3D. Yes, is that correct? Okay, so I need somebody to motion that. Great. All in favor? Okay, all opposed. Good, the motion passes. We will have two different calls for 2D and 3D. Who was now, second? Sorry, I missed. Who second the motion? I did. I did. Oh, Cindy, thank you. All right, now we need to talk a little bit about money. So, so yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going <laughs> to say, so <laughs> right now we're at uh, $1,000 is how much we've paid for sculptors to loan their artwork. Um, and again, the singular artist that is on display in Safety and Justice Building brought three paintings which filled the wall and we paid that person $1,000 and had 500 left over. So that's where it is in the present day. Up till now, the majority of the works have been three-dimensional, right? They've been sculptural pieces. 
is, is that painting in the, or set of paintings in the Safety and Justice Building the first true dimensional artwork for Art on the Move? Yes, exactly. We had, we had a one in the museum, a piece of wood, uh, waves in the museum at one point. Yeah, yeah that... we've had them in the past, but not very often. And we didn't distinguish them like we right. just did from three dimensional. I have a question. Um, if we have a call to artists, can we not take anybody? if we don't like any of the artwork, or I was thinking that at one point we were thinking about having a three-dimensional thing on that wall in the Justice Center. What if we decided we wanted to do that and we put out a call for 2D art too, and then we just didn't take any of those and took a, I mean, is that is that something you can do? Okay. Yeah. So is the question that, that we're supposed to decide now is how many of each is that is that what we're deciding i think the bigger thing is are we going if we do a two-dimensional call for entry are we looking to select one artist to treat the entire space and pay that artist a single stipend and what is that stipend or do we do a call for entry say photography and we try and fill the wall but then uh, the wall is so big and you'll have various sizes. Um, so say you get four teeny tiny little things, it's not gonna fill the wall. You pay each artist $500 a piece because that's what you have in your budget remaining. Um, so it's kind of determining what that, what that will look like. Um, and of course, recognizing that more artists and the more funds that are in that one space, the less sculpture that ends up in, in the rest of town, right? Um, so is the, is the two-dimensional art specifically to fill that space? Yes, at this time, because that's where we have the hanging devices that we've invested in that don't make holes in the wall and that we can change things out. And it doesn't matter how large or small they are, we can hang anything, but we only have that available linear feet, um, which I wish that, I had written down of how exactly that is, but I don't know. That's that's different from all the other Art of the Move because we're just asking for pieces and we decide where to put them after we have them, correct? Correct. Well, so can I, we ask for, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Peter. Can we ask for some kind of installation, whether it's two-dimensional artworks or whatever, specifically to fill that space and give specifications of that space. Um, and it, it can be, if somebody wants to put one big painting that runs the whole extent, they can do that. If they want to put 12 small paintings that are arranged in some, some artistic way, they can do that. That's what we said, yes, right, Angela? Exactly. I, I would just think that we kind of be flexible, see what we get and kind of go for there with, I would say the intention of having majority uh, three-dimensional, but you might just have like one two-dimensional artist and six three-dimensional, but you never know what you get. And I just think we need to be flexible. I think that's what Angela and I talked about today, that we want to be really flexible and let people know that this is what we have, right, Angela? True, the only trick of that is when you put the call for entry out, you'll need to say how much each artist is going to be paid for their loan. So um, I, th I think that we should focus on one artist like we like this year, put out the call and say, we want one artist to fill this space. And if they want to give us 16 things, that's fine, but they get the, set rate for one artist because if we have seven artists putting stuff up there they they'll each get like a hundred dollars it's just like you know it's not worth it to them right. i agree i agree and we have to decide that up front so we need to figure out how much money do we want to do this with 
should that be the same amount as all the other pieces or should that be a little more because they've got a large space to fill and might use multiple pieces? Well, we've got an additional 500 on top, on top of seven grants of a thousand, correct? That's a great point, Peter, but also think about the maintenance and the work that's going to take to put um, paintings in versus a sculpture in. Wouldn't it have less maintenance and less uh, work to put the paintings in? In my opinion, yes, but I'm not an artist. I'm just a genius. No, I'm just joking. No. <laughs> Um, no, I, yes, um, Cindy, you're exactly right. I think, and I think Kim might be able to comment on this space wise, but I think that, you know, carting a, some paintings via car is much less arduous than trying to bring a sculpture and getting the maintenance in. But Angela, you're the expert on this. What do you think? I mean, I think uh, most often, yes easier to install two-dimensional work than three-dimensional. But to Peter's point, if it was an installation artist who came in and treated the entire wall, I mean, that could be quite a bit of time. Um, I, yeah, I, I think that the way What's that? he approached it this last year was a smart one. And the only um, was that, you know, two two-dimensional artists got the same price for three loans as a sculptor did for one loan. Sculptor was more difficult transport, two-dimensional artist, we got more artwork. Um, it makes it a little more streamlined. The art calls are gonna go out the, at the same time. Uh, so we're just treating all artists, no matter what your media, the same. I agree. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, I'm going to throw something out here as a, as a potential uh, motion that we, uh, from the budget, we um, set aside $1,000 each for six um, three-dimensional works and $1,200 for one installation of two-dimensional work or works to fill that space. Now, I be happy to hear a discussion about the no, and I would like to hear Angela's input on that because that, Peter, that's, that's great. So that's brilliant. I would like to hear what Angela has to say about that because she knows our money better. A thin budget, that's fine. Why the extra 200, Peter? Well, just because as we said, it might be multiple artworks and it's they've, they've got a specific space to fill rather than just saying, I've got this work and you can have it for a year. It's, it's, it's more tailored. It takes a, a different kind of, of thought process and preparation on the part of the artist. So we offer a little bit more to fill that specific space. That's my I mean, Andrea, what do you think? Space. Oh, sorry, Cindy. It is a big space. I disagree. I, I feel like getting a sculpture in town is much more expensive. Um, the sculpture itself, most of the time is worth more unless you know, it'd be, be rare that you'd get a two-dimensional. I could be wrong, but I'm just thinking if you think about um, Ursula Major, how difficult it was <sighs> to get that three, 3D piece there. Um, I think we're being very generous with the 2D artists by giving them the same, but I understand for the simple reason of simplifying that it's it makes sense. And I would hope that having a, a multiple art pieces would be part of that process, we would end up getting three or more pieces or one gigantic piece to make it worthwhile. So in true Paul Meese fashion, and I'm throwing this in Angela's lap and she didn't know this, would anybody be interested in talking about this offline? Because yeah, we could sit here and talk about this all night. I think Kim has a point. Oh, yes, Kim. I, I was just going to add that I, I think I agree with Andrea that not only are we talking about a big difference in terms of shipping and, and things like that, but in terms of the fabrication of a sculpture versus the fabrication of a painting, there's enormous difference in price. And so if we are, even if, you know, unofficially, if we are um, hoping to compensate artists for the work that they're doing 
sculptors are spending a lot more money to create art than painters are generally yes. speaking i mean that might not be true for everyone but generally speaking they are spending a lot more in materials than a painter would and so i would agree with andrea that if we were going to have a difference in compensation i would be more inclined to give the sculptors more money than i would the painters me too may i play devil's advocate just real quick thinking bigger mm longer into our future just quickly that let's pretend that years from now the charter does change and let's pretend years from now that we do have more funds and we have more buildings that we could outfit with loans in other ways and in two-dimensional art if we treat all artists the same today with a precedent of set giving artists a thousand dollars for their loan two-dimensional for treatment of this space three-dimensional for treatment of this space and we just use the two calls simply for ease of selection. Then when we get more funds, then when we get more space to make differentiations of price is going to be a better argument and a more logistic or a more logical argument because of the change of the program. This is our infancy. And I think if we start uh, creating, um, we're setting a precedent. So whatever precedent we set for going forward should have reason and behind it. So that would be my reasoning for keeping that singular treatment of the space for ease of selection. And so it, it jives with how much we're paying artists. I also like that because if we decide to put a three-dimensional thing there, it would be the same as the three-dimensional stuff outside. Okay, I'm okay, going so to to my, my, I withdraw my previous suggestion for motion and just say that we are looking for seven artists, $1,000 each, and specifying that one will be a three-dimensional piece to fill that particular space, and the others are to be sculptural three-dimensional works to be placed as the commission sees fit in Longmont. All right, Peter, that's beautiful. Um, so we have some new people here, and... Can we translate that or do we need to translate that? Do you all get it? Danielle, you all are good with this? Okay. I know Teresa is. Danielle, everything makes sense? I Jennifer, so. go I, please, Jennifer. Yes, I have a question. No, I think this is a good way to think about it. But what I'm, I'm just as clarifying, do we pay any shipping or transportation costs? No, they have to. So most of them, I know Angela said that most of the things come from near or around here. So if they lend it to us, no matter how big or small it is, they have to somehow get it here. And then then we pay, do we pay like if we decide, okay, it's going in the library, they have to get it all the way to the library? They Okay, we tell them where to bring it to. Okay, okay. Well, that's another fact. I mean, that's I'm in the discussion that we're talking about, right? That's kind of rolled into the discussion. It's like, they're gonna have more expenses transporting a giant sculpture around than they are putting a few paintings in the back of the car. Okay. All right. But in both cases, they are mostly pre-existing works. They don't create a new work for us. Yeah. And also they get the, they get the exposure of having it outside in the public for whatever reason. Right. No, mm -hmm. I get it's a good deal and I'm glad that we're able to compensate them. Um, but obviously they're going to have more expenses, uh, you know, getting the thing to us, depending on how big it is. Angela, can you explain how that works a little bit? So for our new folks, I don't want to put them in the dark, but so what happens usually is that they, they are responsible for getting it here, putting it up and that's included in their fees or well, no, Angela explained only responsible for transportation the uh transfer of the of and eileen there's a fancy registration term for this one but um the when the liability happens we install the work so once the work arrives it is part of the city loan at the moment that it arrives and then we install it so we take on the liability at that moment so when the person pulls up with their car um at the moment that we start transporting it, uh, that is to say, taking the painting out of the trunk, 
we're responsible for it from then on out. And, you know, it's a contraction, it's a contract with the city. So this is really good for some of the beginning artists, artists that haven't done this kind of work before, because a lot of them haven't had to do a COI, right? A lot of them haven't had to understand insurance policies and look at this. So it, it really is, um, it's an opportunity for exposure. It's also an, uh, it's a, it's a lesson in the business of being an artist. Um, yeah. So, but we are responsible for installation, which that is a fairly heavy cost, especially for installing uh, three-dimensional work. Good. Good. All right. So what I'm hearing is that we've, Peter has a motion on the floor, kind of rough in there. Peter, can you repeat that so we can get that motion? And then we need to probably have a little vote or not a little vote, but a big vote. <laughs> Well, the motion was that, that we, um, for Art on the Move, will uh, have a call for uh, artists, um, for seven artists, $1,000 each. Um, but one of these was to be a two-dimensional work for that very specific space in the Center for um, Justice, whatever. Um, and all others, three-dimensional works to be placed around the city of Longmont at the discretion of the commission and the city. Beautiful. All right, so all in favor of Peter's motion. We need please a say, oh, we, we need a second, sorry. All in, uh, second? Thank you, Andrea. Oh, Andrea has a question. So go ahead, Andrea. You're muted, honey. That was the second. <laughs> all right, sorry. <laughs> I know, Thank trying you. to unmute. Like, I want to keep myself unmuted so I can do that, but then I do other weird things. So, all right. So, Andrea seconded. Do we have um, all in favor? Okay. All opposed? All right. The motion passes. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. All right. Andrea, so now, um, yes, Jennifer? Just one more quick question. Okay, so when the when the city staff arrives for the installation, do we have to pay for that out of our art and public places budget? Yes, that is budgeted annually. Okay, so we have some amount for that too. Okay, thank you. Uh, Randy. Um, what are, are the six other spots? I think we have more than six, but we have to choose six of those from the pool. How many do we have? You know? Lots. Uh, really, last year was my first year going through the process. And ultimately, how the task force decided was based upon the artwork that we had. For example, right. Right. Uh, the blue Picasso horse uh, really needed a long and skinny place. Uh, and it needed to be bolted to concrete. So we had to uh, based upon the list that we had, uh, look at the artworks that were really very specific, site specific, take care of those first. And then the other ones kind of figured themselves out, I guess is the only way I can say it, right? Mm -hmm. Can you make sure I'm on that task force? I, I'm supposed to be. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All yours, sister. All yours. All right. So I knew Angela and I talked today. I think that we knew this was going to be a big one. So um, how do you all feel about Oh, go ahead. I mentioned one other thing. Sorry, quickly. Uh, I will be certain that Marsha and I connect, look at the charter uh, and assure that that is in fact the case prior to launching the call live. Did so we lose Marsha? Uh, possibly. But if, if something is different uh, that way, I'll look into it before we post the call for artists. Okay, great. Great. She waved hey, goodbye. Amy. And yeah, Amy yeah. Marsha had to leave at seven o'clock. She had let me know earlier. All right. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate gotcha. that. And I keep clicking out. So if I'm like, if my camera goes off, we're having really bad weather here tonight. So I'm, I apologize. I can't wait to go home. Are we going to have some kind of vision retreat maybe in the fall? once because you know if if we're all inoculated i feel like we can join you know i would assume by the fall we're all inoculated assume well i won't be chaired by then but so i will join you by zoom 
<sighs> yes. As so- uh, we need to have a retreat as soon as possible. Okay. But- All right. So we, um, Angela, where, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit confused. Do we need to go on to specific money or are we okay right now to move on to our next item? Nope, that's done. So we're on point eight. Oh, goody. Not goody, but I knew it was going to be. All right. Well, here's our big thing. And I'm really excited about this. I don't get excited about much in COVID, but we are now on to strategic planning. And I'm just going to say a few minutes or a few words about this. Um, Holly and Angela and I um, have been working together a little bit on our new strategic plan. We think it's going to be a five-year plan. Um, but everything's in the air right now. And I want to commend our fellow member, Holly, for working so hard on this and getting some information. But we are looking at different formats. Um, the city has asked us to um, submit a pre plan, right, Angela? Basically? I think eventually, yeah. But right now, just looking at the waning of Vision 2020 was very much the catalyst for um, the necessity for a a new and revised uh, strategic action plan. Right. So we're looking at different formats, different ways to get together, different ways to get create a mission plan. And so we are in the beginning stages of what we're working on. And um, Holly has a lot of experience in this. So it's been fun working with her. And Angela and I are kind of like we said today, um, we know enough to be dangerous. So we're excited about Holly's input. Um, I think that there's going to be so many opportunities for all of you to help write this strategic plan, right, Angela? Yep. So I'm going to let Holly talk a little bit about that. Can you hear me, guys? It's cutting in and out on my end. Sorry about that. So, Andrea, it's really exciting for you, for, for me to hear you say that we need to get together and look at our vision because that's really what strategic planning is. And fortunately, because Angela's out there and in contact with a lot of people in the city, she has pretty much communicated with folks that will potentially fund some of our training from an outside facilitator. So that is kind of where we are right now, just trying to decide what that's going to look like and how we can put a proposal together so that we could most effectively do that. So if you guys remember back uh, about a year ago now, we really started some of the pieces of the strategic plan process. Remember, we came together and we did a self-assessment from our commissioners and we looked at some of our strengths related to that. Um, And as an executive team, we did a SWOT analysis. So there are some things that have already gone into that planning process, but it's very exciting now because it looks like there's going to be maybe a whole new opportunity that is even bigger than what we thought when we started a year ago. And of course it all got stalled because we went right into COVID and we weren't really meeting for a couple of months. So lots of good things. And I think Angela will bring it forth. We're gonna meet weekly here for the next couple of weeks to try to solidify a proposal. And then we'll go from there. The other big piece that's come uh, now to the surface, which also has been, you know, in the works for so long, and then of course got uh, stalled by COVID, but to to their credit, pushed it through. And actually this is credit to to Kim. uh, The museum went through a museum assessment program through AAM, which is the American Alliance for Museums. And so some of the audience and uh, some of the legwork, if you will, of who's committed and who are the stakeholders in our community for culture, who are some of the other organizations, who are our our neighbors, friends, and partners has already been done. And so as a museum leadership team, we meet tomorrow to go through that process, uh, go back through what our peer reviewers have submitted to us and then make comments. So we're receiving a a massive uh, leg up, if you will, uh, in the very near future. So I think that this, this whole bit of uh, assessment and strategy 
and looking at the charter and looking at the program as a whole and drilling down into uh, the changes that we want to make on a on a you know culture in a big picture uh, in Longmont and then even to our our mission and our values and those bits and pieces of it is going to happen in the very near future. So all very exciting and. I really do appreciate um, Amy and, and, and Holly's work thus far. So yeah, stay tuned, but uh, lots to come. Very exciting. It's really cool, you guys, it, folks. It's really, really cool. I'm so excited. Holly has a lot of experience and um, Angela and I are learning as we go. And it's just, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I'm hoping that I can stay on in some capacity as we write this, like, like member at large. But um, it's, I don't get excited very, well, yes, I do. I get excited about everything. But this is really, really fun stuff. And it's things that um, our future is about. We're talking about stuff that's going to happen. Like your grandkids, your great-grandkids are going to be looking at these things in 20 years, which is really, really cool. So any questions about that? Conservation and maintenance, Ms. Angela. All right. So hopefully everyone had an opportunity to look at the short list that I have sent to you. Thank you, Amy, for going through that with me. Basically, the process that we did was uh, took these spreadsheets of uh, pieces and then broke them down, if you will, into a loose quadrant of the city and then assigned. Um, I'm sorry, I did not look at where you lived and based it on your on your address, I just said, hey, guess what? You're, you are south, you are central, you are looking northwest and, and then uh, split the pieces. So everyone got a small handful. If it was a piece that had more components, uh, I didn't give you as many pieces as, as someone else. But I think uh, depending on your load in your life, if it's too much and you wanna drop something off, let me know. If you are super jammed, excited about this and you want more, let me know. Um, also included in that was a link to the, um, the smart sheet that we created uh, this last summer, if you'll recall. And I'm gonna do something hairy scary and share my page. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I probably will. Well, you're going to see yourselves there for a minute, but hold on. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? I can't see you now. Holly, I can see you. Give me a nod. I can. Um, does that work? So it's not, it's not pretty, but it's really functional. So when you follow the link, this is going to be the form that you find. Uh, can you see it? Is it really too small to see? No, looks okay. Oh, Holly says good. Okay, so um, the great part about the smart sheet is if you decide that you are a pen on paper kind of person, I typically am, uh, I will print this out and maybe keep a maintenance notebook. And every time you visit, you could just keep it in your notebook and answer all of these questions. And then when you get home, take your notebook and put it into the form. The brilliance of this form is that as soon as you submit it, it sends me an email and it also loads into a spreadsheet that then I can filter and sort. The even better part about it is that um, Eileen and I are working on eventually uh, mirroring our fields with our database that houses our public art collection, collection files. And so, um, this is really important work and it, I, I know that it's laborious, but it's also a new way of, of, doing, of doing a maintenance uh, sheet. So uh, some of this is very much opinion based and that's okay. You don't have to be a museum whiz and touch day gauze all day. I'm sorry, I'm just jealous. I'm gonna just say that, sorry, Eileen. But you don't have to be a museum whiz to go through this form and do a very fair assessment. And it is going to tell Eileen and I um, if there's something that, that raises a flag in our world. So uh, an overall condition, how, you know, overall, when you go up to it, how is it? Um, 
the reason that there's no excellent is because the only time a piece of artwork is excellent is the second that it leaves the studio and is in the most pristine condition ever. And once it's installed, it's, it's great, right? But it's gone through travel and it's experienced a little bit of life. So it's not excellent anymore. So that's why it's not on there. Uh, but, but obviously if there's, if you send me a note and I open my email and I see poor, I'm going to go and see that piece that afternoon. Right. Um, and then these additional issues, what, if there's a broken part, if there's something missing, that's going to tee me off that we have a bigger problem here. Um, a surface coating. Hey, did somebody spray paint it? Does it look like somebody took a magic marker and put a, another mustache on Roosevelt? You know, those are going to be the kinds of things. It might be a bronze and uh, the wax on the bronze is starting to show through and we need to do a new treatment. And so, suddenly it's starting to look foggy to you. Well, it's got a surface coating, right? Um, and what is the condition? Ooh, it looks really bad. It's flaking. So again, you don't have to be a genius um, to answer these questions. And I tried really hard to have field notes like uh, Peter had mentioned earlier. It's just with this format, it's really, it's a little bit finicky, uh, but there's hazards. So if there's a live wire and it's sparking and there's a pool of water at the base, um, you know, that's hazardous. Something, a hazard is certainly something that if a kid were to come up to it, that kid might get hurt, right? Um, damage, what is the assessment of, your assessment of that damage and how much of it, what percentage of it is damaged? Is there a placard? That is our number, number one goal for our first assessments of these artworks is, is there a placard present? That also includes a bronze plaque, a uh, plexiglass placard, um, if it exists or not. And then what the condition of that placard is. Um, and if you are able to do a latitude, longitudinal um, assessment, there's, there's a uh, link. So if you're doing this on your phone, um, you could get your lat la latitude, longitude right away. Um, it would help just if we're in the future gonna do like a walking tour or something like that, um, but not necessary. I know that's an added, that's a bonus. Um, and then file updates, the goal for that is any images that you take as you go along the way. Um, if something's broken or if just it's a pretty picture, whatever images you can send uh, is all the better, all the better. And then uh, you can choose to send a copy of your responses to yourself and then you submit it to me and it comes straight to my email. And uh, this is this is really, is a game changer. So uh, we've tried to refine it. I've had uh, interns play with it um, and I think it's good. So uh, Andrea, yes. So um, I, from your email, I got the impression we were only looking at the placard. Are you telling us then we should just do a full assessment of the whole sculpture while we're there? Depends on if you have the time or not. It's completely up to you. Um, my hope is that these can at least be a, a seasonable, uh, seasonal adoption so that everyone can commit to the number of works. And again, you can add or subtract uh, for, for this season. And if you can't fill out this form and you can only tell me, yes, it has a placard, no, it doesn't, um, that will move us forward certainly on that project. Others? You said um, in the note that there's, um, there's no place for comments. You can enter text in where it says hazards noted. And what I've done before is I'll just put no hazards, but you know there's grass growing that covers up part of the image or on this one side it's, it's discolored and it's, it's unsightly or something like that. Um, so you can actually provide comments in that way. I know. Um, so I'm not the um, developer. Uh, I am only the alpha user on this one. And I'm working very hard with our city tech person on making changes. And I'm pleased we are this far. So yes, by all means, please use the ha no hazards. 
but hey, Angela, look at this. Yeah, um, open character fields are apparently a thing. Uh-oh, not me. Okay. Okay. Good. Any other, yeah, any other feedback or comments on that? Thank you, Angela. It's so much, organ it's so organized and great to do that. Um, we are now looking at the colorful poetry in the middle age stuff at the city, right, Angela? So just in short, um, have you been to the uh, city building or the, I guess the courthouse building, is that what we call it? Civic center. Civic center lately. That's your question. Have any of you been there? Well, it's time to go. Go Angela. Uh, so last year, one of our uh, city employees, actually not just one, um, a number of them, uh, of course, we're in a construction zone because of all of the construction that was happening at the at the Civic Center. And they had mentioned, hey, can art in public places please take a look at the banners? Does everybody know what I'm talking about? I should have brought a picture, but I didn't. Um, anyways, the, the, there are a number of banners, um, and that's what the artist called them initially. And the title of the work is Colorful, Colorful Poetry in the Middle Ages. Uh, the work um, call was in 1992. Records have it that it was installed in 1994. Um, so it's 27 years old. I, the original says that there were 44 banners, but I looked at a bid for treatment for this work for, from a textile conservator from 2009, and she addressed some 20, 20 banners. Um, so one of the new commissioners actually, I think is assigned to go and view this work. Um, but, but I'm hoping that we can get a, a group of volunteers who might just go and pay your utility bill in, in person and, or just go and visit, uh, the civic center building and take a look at those. And I can send you pictures from the original, but I think that they're pretty faded and the real question on the table, um, and we don't have to answer this tonight, is what is the path forward? Uh, do we get a conservator, a textile conservator out here to assess the work, which will mean getting a lift, getting at least one down, probably one that's been in the light for a long time. Um, looking at if the textiles are frayed, what the condition of, of the material is, um, looking at the color, uh, is it something that can be re-dyed? Um, I don't really know, I'm not a textile conservator, but, uh, and really how, how is it that we should move forward so that piece can either relive its, its former glory or that we address it so it can be the best looking piece that it can be because the Civic Center of course went under massive renovation so art and public places received quite a bit of construction funds. I don't know the exact amount, um, but when the new budget comes out, I'll know. And also, of course, as you likely know, it is the 150th, I can't say that word, sesusubikuquenchinal, 150th anniversary of the Chicago, Colorado colony um, this year. So the city is celebrating. And Ses sesquicentennial. Thank you. I can't say it. Um, and the city is celebrating, and they would certainly they are championing, and they're going to uh, promote any any and all projects that we do this year. Um, so that's kind of the story of that. So uh, at the very least, hoping for a number of volunteers who would like to go and, and view the piece, and if anyone has seen it recently, if you have any thoughts. I, I think they're really faded. Uh, I believe you mentioned that they had been, I don't even remember what she did with them, but they had been treated or 
fluffed up or refreshed in some way, shape or form years ago. And I think it looked a little better, but I, they do look faded. Uh, I'm with you, Andrea. Exactly. I don't know. I, you know, we definitely need to assess it, but I, I would be really surprised <laughs> if we don't do decommission them eventually. So just my thoughts. We went, um, Cindy and Angela, when we were looking at space, right? Um, and you pointed them out to us, Angela, and they are pretty um, worn looking. I mean, they're not, they're not fresh, they don't pop. You really almost don't even acknowledge them because they're so faded and uh, and I'd been in there many times and actually didn't even notice them because they're not very um, fresh looking. They're definitely more pastel now than bright colors. <laughs> I definitely. think we were just like whitish, kind yeah. of off-white, yeah. not, not super attractive. I mean, I, I'm not putting them down. It's just age. Um, no, I'm not super attractive and fresh. And, you know, <clears throat> this happens. <laughs> so, so I think, would any of us be willing, I will, when I get home, be willing to go take a peek and then report back to us next month? Yes, I will go look at them also. Uh, does anybody know what the fiber content of them is? Were they done on cotton or polyester or what? Do you know? That'd be Ange. That, so I'm so excited to say that because of COVID, the most positive thing that has ever come out of COVID is that when the museum closed, a uh, volunteer front desk staff, not volunteer, sorry, front desk staff um, went through a digitization process and I actually <sighs> can access all of the original 1994 files from my home. Oh, so wow. Look for you and I can find, and it's, it's brilliant. So, um, I will send you a note offline about all of that business. And um, maybe in the meantime too, I can ask finance what the final number was that came from the Civic Center CIP because those funds are directly linked to that building. And considering that it's the 150th year Maybe this is just like the stars aligning of a perfect time to accept the space. I'm kind of with all of you. I don't know if a conservator is, is right the right move. Maybe it's time to brighten it all up. Woohoo! But if you, if a few of you would be willing to go and um, just take some notes, and then we will put this on the agenda for next month. And if you want to get together offline and go together, that's totally cool, right, Angela? But um, I know with our COVID responsibilities, we have to be careful. And our new people, if you wanna go look, this is a great project to get started on like, I'm like, ooh, we need some help on those. So I think that'd be really great. And then we'll come back next month and kind of get a path, conservator or new plan. What do you think, Angela? Okay, great, all right. My stepmother so I have was up there Jennifer screaming. volunteering. Is that is there anybody else who can commit in one month to go over there and just take a peek? Aaron, Aaron Jennifer, Holly, Pamela, Peter. Awesome. Thank you guys or folks. We are on to our administrator's report. All right, thank you all for sticking in there and hanging in there. Okay, so a couple of fun things. Oh, the one that I already just said because it tied in. Um, we've been approached by the city to anything that we're doing for the word that I can't say, 150th year anniversary. Blah, blah, blah. I, oh my gosh, I can't say it. I'm gonna uh, mute myself. So I'll uh, keep that in mind. Um, another project that came in front of art and public places and also a number of folks within the city, um, not to the point where we need to make it new business, but just kind of to put yet again back on our radar is uh, 
the city and the state are going to be working on Highway 66 eventually from Hover to Maine. So if you will, west, west of, of 287 on, on um, 66, the highway. And uh, so it had come to light again about the North Entry Gateway Project. Um, and that to say, there's all kinds of different projects going on, right? There's, there's the state highway and the 66, which is the road piece of it. But there also uh, is the wayfinding initiative, which is a large city initiative, uh, which uh, Marsha had alluded to, the kind of rebranding piece. But then also that Art in Public Places for years now has looked at a North Gateway piece. And as far as I can tell, based on previous research, really it ended up that uh, my predecessor, Lauren, uh, that even through all the digging and finding and looking, uh, that there was really no good good place that the city owned. Uh, so I just, especially with some of you folks who have been on the commission in the past, if you have any aha moments related to that conversation of, of looking for a location for North Gateway piece, um, I'd be interested to hear. Aside from that, um, I guess it is just kind of a stay tuned and it's it's on our radar. Um, yeah. Feedback? Um, I, I, if I'm thinking correctly, is the city of Longmont putting up some beautiful gateway signs, you know, that say long, you're entering Longmont, is that going on? Yeah, so, and I'm not a part of the wayfinding city committee that was way before I arrived, but yes. So somewhere in uh, the pre-design phase, like the, the need for wayfinding to the point of um, hiring some sort of, thank you, um, hiring a design for, I think that there's, there's something in, in there. And I think that that's why we're being brought to the table at this point is because if the city is doing a large wayfinding uh, program or, or initiative that boy, it would be sure smart to make it beautiful and in, include art in public places. Right. I think we, we would need to, to see that what, they're proposing or what they've done are doing before we make any big decision. Right. Oh, that's most certainly the case. Most certainly the case. Any other feedback on that? Susan? Susan, you're muted, honey. All right. Um, it's one of those pieces like if you're on 119, um, kind of across from sandstone, it's like a, um, it looks like a river kind of thing, and it's on this pedestal, um, it's not real tall, I mean, you do see it, um, it's on the north side of 119, like if you're coming off I-25 into the city, is that the kind of thing? The, the, the ones that the entryway pieces are Florida Llano, the big uh, uh, red stone piece on the east side of town. And then the other one is the blue balls entering from the boulder from the diagonal right. to the entryway pieces. Okay, okay. So we only have two of them. There's been talk of doing another one on the north. And you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm, you may not disagree with me, but those those entryway pieces were highly controversial in the end. And I I I wouldn't mind having a little bit of discussion whether or not to even have it, because I I just feel like like. Floridiana to this day, people are really griping about these stones, which are really historically significant uh, fence posts, but they view them as grave stones, graveyard stones. And I'm with uh, Andrea. I think we need to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's necessary or uh, I just, 
I'm not sure if I want to put so much money. Those are the big, big, they cost a lot of money. We may be going through a big recession. We may be cut, having a budgetary cutback in the next couple of years and doing a big entryway piece that a lot of people aren't very um, pleased about or they speak loudly about that anyway is, um, I just don't know if it's important to, enough to do. I mean, it has to be discussed for sure. The other thing is that neither of those pieces say anything about welcome to Longmont on them. I mean, isn't that what the city is looking for? Something that says welcome to Longmont and then, and then. Twofold, like typically a gateway piece is something like when you think of the Eiffel Tower, you know you're in Paris. When you think of Spirit of Longmont or you see something like that, a Coloradan might say, oh, I'm on my way from Boulder to Longmont because I see this. And in the artist statement initially, it was something along the lines of that there was a lot of technology happening in, in the city. And and so, yes, I, I certainly um, I can hear both sides. Uh, so, again, like it's it's not a this is happening or not happening. Wayfinding, I think, uh, one way or the other. And just signage and maybe Susan that's what you were talking about is is there a sign there there's something I think it even says welcome to Longmont on it Those I, I'll just notice it the next time I go by it or something that is part of the wayfinding project with the city that city of Longmont that you're talking about Susan because they were going to put one on the west side as well. I don't know if you guys remember a few years back, they right there at Hover in 119, if you're coming from Boulder, heading east at that stoplight, right before you got to that stoplight, they put a big um, median there because they were going to put a wayfinding sign there. And even that one that is on 119 coming in from the east, heading west into the city, the two mountains, and it's got a stream in it and everything. Right. Exactly. That's what yeah. I That, I think, cost the city $250,000 just for that. And, um, yeah, and that hasn't been popular. And I know the city would like to do three more of them eventually, but they don't have the property or the placement. Okay, that's shocking. Okay, so this and makes more sense. Know more about that, Sandy Cedar is a good person. Yeah. Okay, so it it makes sense then that they roped art and public places in because I I think that part of the goal, of course, is to make it beautiful and who best, you know, to advise on something beautiful than art and public places. But again, this was just one meeting, so don't be surprised if it comes about in new business. But right now, it's just kind of a FYI. I got an email, that kind of thing. Um, any other questions related to that? It doesn't sound like legs anyways okay so this one's a fun one um what did i call it earlier amy uh, let me look uh, golden spike yeah it was like a name i was like i was gonna go there but i'm gonna let angela tell you what it is no you go the golden spike conundrum yes so in 1997 um i ha i want to be accurate and hold on just one quick moment. No, 1994. Okay, hold on just a second. I got it here, hold on. 1994, the work is 27, no, 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 that's not it. 150 year old Chicago colony, bolded, bold, gold, oh, Never mind. go go for it. I'm gonna mess it up. So, okay, here we are. So in, in 1997, um, on the north side of St. Vrain, Greenway underpass at Boston Avenue, which the re this is part of the reason that it's been brought to our attention is because of course of the Boston Bridge project. I asked questions and they said, oh, there's something there, which is not art in public places. But apparently um, when the city uh, attached the St. Brain Greenway trail between Main Street where it originated and Golden Ponds, where they started building it in fr from in the 90s, they made a commemorative moment by city council driving some golden spikes um, and created a plaque. And the idea was to mimic the transcontinental railroad connection. So those were the places where the two, that, that, that um, connection happened. And so that was fantastic. 
Um, but it's not an art in public places piece. And I don't, so the question is the ownership, of course, piece of it. And when the demo happens of that space, they'll have to come up. So I got an email basically saying, hey, what should we do with these things? And I just had to share because it does make me laugh because of course, that's the whole purpose of art in public places, right? Is when you commemorate a moment in time with a, a thing and it, um, you can have ownership and track how long the, uh, how long it's been in place and what it is. Is it three feet long to Holly's point from earlier or are they inches long or, you know, what is this? So um, it's just a conversation at this point, but the word salvage came into place and I was like, I don't think Art in Public Places wants to adopt it as of right now. It seems appropriate that taking some photos of it and taking photos from the past and having that, that be acquired by the museum uh, would be appropriate. But then as we think bigger and we start thinking about the new Boston Avenue project, that maybe getting images of these of these pieces and mixing that in, you know, the new with the old uh, might might be a good idea. So uh, really nothing to discuss, uh, really no, no, no point to be made other than maybe you remember it happening, maybe you were there when they drove the spikes in. Um, but yeah, it's there. I've never seen them. I, I might go visit, but yeah, I'll let you know kind of what comes of it. I've got a question. What connection does Longmont have to the Transcontinental Railroad, which was way north of here? It went across <laughs> southern Wyoming and northern Utah. It was I don't know, but I will I can find out for you. No, it was a mirror of concept, right? That that these two that these two points, the St. Vrain Greenway Trail was meeting with the new ground that they were breaking to make the full loop of the St. Great, you know, so that 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 is I mean, and that's quite comprehensive for for and and uh, progressive for a city to have a trail that really goes the full city, and that you can. And so when they started the development piece of that part to Golden Ponds and connected it with the original, they drove the spikes like that. That that's the point where the project started in the '90s, and they were meeting. Um, where so is this? It's. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't know because it's not a part of the art and public places collection. So I don't have any, I don't have images, I don't have <coughs> but I do, it says on the north side of the St. Vrain Greenway underpass at Boston, there's a dedication plaque and some spikes in the ground adjacent to the greenway. So I'm going to ask parks, I mean, it's a parks thing, right? It's a, um, and Paula, Paula just came out with her book, but I, I'll have to review and I don't think it was in there. Anyways. I have a call in. I'll, if, if I get my answer before our meeting's over, I will let you know. So anyways, um, the point is just like that, um, what's to happen when they come up and chances are they'll be acquired by the museum and we'll, we'll see that they make it their way there. But in the future, <laughs> as we art in public places do the Boston Bridge underpass project, it might be nice to nod to this moment in in the city's past so i just thought you all would really think that that was fascinating like i do i'm a collections geek i'm sorry <laughs> i'm a geek too so i just have to tell you my expert um he he said like the light rail or the old choo-choo railroad <laughs> Oh my goodness. And that's yeah. all I got. Really? Okay, guess what we're on to, friends? Commissioner comment. Did we do new business? Yeah, that's just what we just did. Say, I thought oh, that was the administrator's report. report, but Oh, sorry. Administ anything else? She said today that that was kind of her administrator's report, so I'm just Andrea. Yeah. I just have a question about budget. Um, how has COVID affected our budget this year, or is it too soon to know? You're muted, Bib. Yeah, sorry. Um, 
So the budget had has been approved. I know that they're in those wonky moments of the rollover bit. I don't know if Kim's there and can speak more about that, but um, so the reporting should be available in the next couple, like month or two, but our budget is flat. So our budget is the same as last year. Uh, asset wise, that line is a hundred thousand and, you know, um, things that are annually budgeted, like shock art comes out of that, right? Um, things, um, encumbered dollars, right, will show up, but we're flat. So we have had no, no impact. Uh, I, I would just add, Andrea, that, um, you know, a couple of years ago when there were a lot of city projects that were happening, um, the Art and Public Places fund balance was um, really kind of padded, if you will. Um, so we've got a lot of money in the fund balance um, and we continue to get uh, revenue in every year as a result of additional projects. So we're not at risk at the moment. Um, certainly we're not. I think you, you're you familiar with past years when there were major recessions. Um, I think even if we do see a downturn in some of the city projects, we've got enough in our fund balance to, to carry us for quite a long time. So I think we're doing pretty well. Thanks, Kim. That's comforting. And I know this city is committed to art and, and work. So just want to let you know that um, for the record, um, our rail station at 2nd and Main was one of the most important facets of the central part of the United States. Um, and I'm, I was told to read a capstone undergraduate um, mesh, um, thesis, but that was my son. So he's done so much history on Longmont that um, I'm not joking. He like knows more about us than anything. So it looks like that it really is a big deal. So might be worth investigating. I'll let you know. So right now it's basically at the top of um, natural resources of, hey, we have spikes. They need to come out. What's going to happen to them? And I <laughs> I threw my lean's way. I said, museum acquisitions would be a good place. But before we take a jackhammer to any concrete, <laughs> you might want to. Well, and I think also talking to Carmen, as we talked about earlier today, Carmen Ramirez, and also talking about to, to the people that were here or the ancestries would be great. Awesome. So we are um, back to a number 12, which is commissions reports or comments. Anything else? I'm just so excited to see new commissioners. Danielle, Trisha, Jennifer. Oh, you guys are awesome. You're going to love this group. Um, I wish you could all come together and like fist powwow, but it's going to happen in your tenure. So um, I'm just so excited to have you here. I'm emotional because it's just a wonderful, amazing group of people. And I think you will love Angela. She will tap your energy like nobody's business. Um, my sister, actually, this is a sidebar eavesdropped on my conversation with Angela. And she goes, oh my God, you and Amy, are, she's just like you. She's so full of energy. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably why we like our jobs. So any other feedback on tonight? I would love to hear. Trisha, what would you like to know? Before, like in your next, we have four minutes left. What, what would you I'm like good. to know? My, my br I'm tonight? good. My brain is nice and full. <laughs> How about you, Jennifer? What would you like to know? Anything that we can help you understand more? I thought of something a few minutes ago, but now it's left me. So okay, so I email either Trish or email Angela and I, or we'll yeah. give you answers. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty good. I, I'm think I'm not. I don't have to know everything at once. It's okay if it comes in a little at a time or some at a time. And um, I am. I am very interested in these banners, and I'm excited to go look at those because I am. A fiber artist and also I'm not a conservator though friends and um 
I want to just see what these are. I mean, this is the thing with fiber art. It is not really designed to be permanent, especially stuff like that. These banners that are exposed to the light and the dust and the, you know, people coming in and out. They're really not designed to be permanent. The only kind of fiber art that can really be permanent is really stuff that has conservators or they have like that big sacristy in the church where they put everything carefully away and all that. That's why Angela and I met conservator or we mentioned conservator because we wanted to talk about that, but yeah. Right. But anyway, oh, take a look. All right. Um, who am I missing? Our other new person. Oh, Danielle, you are trying to be quiet. I thought I was going to get away. Um, I am just taking this all in. I have already learned a lot tonight. So I'm really excited to just keep keep hearing what you guys all have to say and to just kind of just jump in. Isn't it's, it fun? It's a lot. It's really cool. It really is. So I'm excited. Okay. Well, I'm really excited to have you here. So let, let me look at our last. I think we did really well, Angela. We are two minutes ahead of time. Um, so... Anything else for the good of the order? Um, Angela, once again, you've done an amazing job. So Happy New all... Year, everyone. It's a new year. Okay, so we are now at 8 or 7.58. I would like to see if anybody would like to move to adjourn. I so move. Cindy Tiger moves and Randy Long seconds. All in favor? All right. God bless you all. Wonderful. To Thank you, everyone. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Amy. Welcome, all the new commissioners. Thank you. Thank you so much.